guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you what I made my mom for Mother's Day. First, we're going to be making handmade painted cards because, well, moms love those. And then we're going to be making these beautiful polymer clay flower bouquets. So to start off these cards, I'm using a multimedia paper. These do well with most mediums, so watercolors won't be an issue. These are your super basic watercolors, and I'm mixing blue and a tad of black to get a muted blue color. Remember when using watercolors that it will dry lighter than when it's wet, so I'm going back and adding some color concentration so I'll get darker areas without having to do a second layer of paint. After that's dry, you'll use a pencil to draw out your design. I'm doing this design based off of a cute flower line drawing I saw on my daily calendar at work. After you have your pencil outline, go back with either white paint, which I did, or a white gel pen. A pen will definitely be quicker and easier, I just didn't have one on hand. After the outline, I splattered it with some watered down white paint and let it dry. is super easy too. I'm just mixing together some purple and red and painting a heart with some exclamation lines. I'm practicing what I want to write first, then I'll sketch it with a pencil and go over it with white paint and a small brush. cars that your mom will love. Now we're getting to the good part of this episode. We're going to start making our polymer clay flower bouquets. You're going to want to get some inspiration. Pinterest, of course, is a great resource. You essentially want to search based on the colors that you want to use. If you're making this for mom, you can search her favorite colors, her favorite flowers, or just colors that she uses in her home decor. Here are some of the bouquets I like and want to try to replicate. I chose a warm fall bouquet, one that has both warm and cool tones, a dark and moody one, and a soft pink and purple bouquet. I wanted to match the colors as best I could to the photos, so I mixed the clay together to get the colors I wanted. The best way I found to do this is roll out each color you want to mix in a snake, then twist them all together, roll it in a ball, roll it back into a snake, and repeat until the color is as mixed as you like. When adding colors, I advise to start with a smaller amount because you can always add more if you need to. colors, I'm going to start making my flowers and greenery. The easiest way to get the same size petals is to roll out the color you want into a snake, thicker for larger petals, 
thinner for smaller, and then using a razor blade, cut equal size pieces. Whatever flowers you choose, you're going to want to add leaves to complete the bouquet. I like to do a few different shades of green and different leaf shapes to add dimension and interest. scoring lines onto your leaves gives the effect of leaf veins and adds some cool texture. to be surprisingly easy. Essentially every flower is made in a similar way. You start with the center and then you add the outer petals of the flower. I started a lot of mine with the rose method which is when you roll out a ball into a small flat circle and simply roll it up gently or fold it in half by pinching the two meeting points. Then you're going to build onto that. Make a few more rolled out circles getting slightly bigger as you work your way out and overlap each one slightly on top of the last petal you placed on your flower. Continue doing this until your flower is as big as you want. obvious definition between each petal. You'll see me using a tool to keep each petal separated as I build my flowers. You don't have to have the specific tools though. You could just use a mini flathead screwdriver or whatever else you may have laying around your house. that I really liked is you make a ball, you make a small snake, 
and wrap it around the circumference of the ball. Cut off any excess. Then you're going to cut four equal size pieces for a large petal size. Make your large petals, add a little pleat on the bottom, and place them around your sphere. flatten the snakes, then wrap them around the ball until it is as big as you want it. I added some poke marks on the center ball for some texture. and by simply changing the shape of your petals. You can make some thinner, some thicker. Play around with different petal shapes. of my flowers. Why I do this is because I don't want my flowers to be too tall. I'm going to be mounting them to a background so it will also be really helpful for them to have a flat back. Also, if you're using a shadow box with a glass front, you'll want your flowers to be short enough to fit behind the glass. And after you cut the back off, you'll have more clay to make more flowers. So win, win, win. <laughs> If you get to a point where your clay is sticking to your fingers too much and you really can't work with it, just put it in the freezer for a few minutes and it will be much easier to work with. Also, pushing the petal tips forward towards the center of the flower or back away from it will give it a totally different look.
your greenery, you want to be really gentle. It is very easy to squeeze your clay piece a little too hard and smush all of your petals together. I try to hold mine from the bottom so I don't compromise the petals. So now we're going to build our bouquets. You'll want to mark out the size of whatever you'll be mounting it to so you know how big to make it. I'm using some picture frames because I couldn't find any shadow boxes at any of my local stores, unfortunately. Then you'll just start placing your flowers. You'll want to put the larger leaves or greenery in the back and then tuck any smaller extras in later. As you can see, it'll take a few times of placing your flowers and such until you get it how you want it. do a geometric design so I drew out a triangle on a piece of paper and worked off that. Last one is for my mom. Her house is decorated with neutrals and pops of orange and blue, so I wanted to incorporate those into this piece so I know she could hang it anywhere.
I'm going to bake them now according to the instructions on your clay package. Keep them on the paper that you built it on. Just put that on a cookie sheet and put that in the middle rack of your oven. You don't need to preheat the oven either. Let it heat up with your clay pieces already in it. And if you're using a small oven or like a little toaster oven, you'll want to make an aluminum foil tent on top of it so it doesn't burn your clay. Just don't let the top of the aluminum foil touch any of your clay. After your timer goes off and the clay is done, just turn your oven off and let it cool with your pieces still in there. Wait for it to completely cool before you remove them. I'm repurposing some old picture frames for a couple of these bouquets, so I'm just going to give them a fresh coat of paint and let dry. white background so I'm just using the same multimedia paper as I did with the cards. I'll be hot gluing it to the back panel of the picture frame. situated and glued in place you'll place your bouquet on top of it because most of my flowers and greenery were touching they bake together minus a couple pieces so it's fairly easy to pick up in place it's still very fragile though so be very careful when moving it make sure it's centered and exactly where you want it before gluing <laughs> I also like to go back and gently touch each flower just to make sure that none of them will pop off and if they do then I'll go back and glue them. Then you're going to scrape off any visible glue, but be careful not to cut or disturb your background. And after it's secure, you're all done. The second one I'm securing to the picture frame back and then I'm painting a light gray color with some gouache paint that I have at home. After that's dry, I'll attach the back and glue on my flowers. watching. If you like our content, be sure to subscribe and follow us on social media.